I mean, I know I'm not on the committee, but they didn't have to just throw me out of the pasta dinner tonight. <laughs> what a bad. Jeez. Right. Uh, welcome back to Hoops HD, everybody. It is Championship Week Video Notebook Day Number. Like they didn't Sleeker's even want me there. Sleek is not here. We don't even know what day it is. He, he's the one yeah. that tells us. Uh, it, I think it's it, day number 10, actually. It's day 10. 10. It is the eve of the Thursday of Championship Week, which is probably my favorite college basketball day on the entire calendar. It is also pasta dinner night, guys. I that, I, I got thrown out of the pasta dinner. Yep, and they got the ice cream bar afterwards, too. Uh, yeah. The, the yeah. selection committee has officially begun meeting at uh, wherever it is that they meet, some hotel room in secret bunker yeah. somewhere. Well, not a bunker. Griggs is in the only bunker that we've got. Uh, I'm Chad Sherwood, by the way. Uh, let me go back to the gallery view here. David Griggs below me. Uh, sorry, David Griggs to the side of me. David Dorman below me. John Salika might be jumping in here. Might not. Who knows? Uh, but it's late, and we're going to get going here. Open bar at the at the Boston Inn. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Wait. That's why. That's why you got thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> and back um, into the bunker. Too much this, enough. This yeah. is our championship week video notebook where we begin with news and notes. Uh, and uh, watch before we even go to news and notes, I want to again welcome everybody who's new to the website. Uh, tons of traffic. You guys have made this our best month ever this month, or soon will. You know, probably by sometime tomorrow will become our best month we've ever had at Hoops HD. Tons of new followers on Twitter as well. So if you're watching the podcast here for the first time, uh, I'm sorry that that you have to watch this. It's going to be pretty <laughs> lousy, but it's great. <laughs> no, I'm just having fun. Uh, yeah, uh, but we do have news and notes, and uh, let's start with the big one, the big, 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 biggest one of them all. Uh, Dorman, Jim Bayheim. Uh, Maybe it's not officially a retirement. It's the official <laughs> word is he will not be back next year. Uh, but he I is was... gone from Syracuse after 47 years as head coach and 60 years with the program from the day he stepped on the stepped in there as a freshman uh, uh, on the basketball team. That's an incredible run. I mean, 60 years in one place it is incredible. Um, <clears throat> I, I can't uh, back him for the way he spoke to the press and the media and some kids here and there, but what he's done over the last 50, 40 years for the game of college basketball has been unbelievable. He has uh, won a lot of big games. He has uh, brought the two, three zone to new levels that no one thought would be brought 20 years ago, people said he had to kick it over and get rid of it. He said no, and he was right. Went on to win a championship with the Carmelo, McNamara, Hakeem Warwick team in New Orleans. Uh, they beat Kansas in the championship. I believe it was four Final Fours and many wonderful, tremendous men he put through the program. So uh, I grew up watching the Big East on uh, Big Monday with Bayheim and Big John Thompson and Carnesecca and all. And that was just the best. That was when ESPN it had really those was. huge. It was the best. So I wish him all the best. He was great for the game. Right. Um, maybe somebody that did not quite go out on the same note that, that he did, but uh, Griggs, uh, not done with his career pro- pro- probably, but Mark Adams officially resigned as Texas Tech's head coach today after, uh, you know, this guy was national coach of the year last year. I mean, wow. Yeah, in largely because, and he did resign. At least that's what is being pointed out. Texas Tech uh, would have allowed him to come back, but I just don't think he wanted to deal with the distractions or anything like that. I don't know exactly what the comment was. I mean, I know what it about what it was or approximately what it was, and I certainly saw what everybody else saw about what oh, they. Oh, Craig, oh, Craig, you asked in the email when I when I emailed that he resigned. You asked what yeah, he said. Yeah, his I, comment I, was I, to, I, I told resigned. you. Yeah. I told you what he said was I resigned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ahead. I I just want to say that like I, I think I've made this point before. College basketball coaches they're nothing like professors or academics or PhDs, except for one thing. They know an awful lot, a lot of them, about one specific thing. And then once you swerve away from that thing, sometimes they don't know much of anything. Sometimes they don't know what to say. Uh, They say the wrong things. Uh, Not the same sport. I remember Howard Schnellenberger, a football coach once, didn't know who Elvis Presley was. So... (laughs) So it isn't that surprising when when sometimes they say things inappropriate. I don't think, while I don't condone the comment, I don't think it's necessarily what's in his heart or what his ideology is. 
nor do I necessarily think it makes him a bad person. I just think he said something dumb, and I would have liked to have thought some other form of corrective action could have been taken uh, to where the, he didn't have to leave over it. But I don't. I'd rather not get into that debate tonight. It's the middle of the night. Yeah, we 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 can <laughs> obviously debate that this type of stuff during the off season and, and further. But uh, one other thing, uh, we discussed Jaden Clark for UCLA out for the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, it is now official. He is actually out for uh, the entire season with the injury. Uh, I guess that trainer was wrong. That said, he'd be back in a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a big loss. Uh, I got to tell you. He, he was scoring a little more and he was catching on on the offense. But as far as defense go, I'll take that kid over almost anyone in the country. He is a lockdown defender. He is as good as anyone in the country. And when you play against teams in the tournament in college basketball, there's usually only one solid scorer on a team. Uh, when you have a lockdown uh, defender like him and you can stick him on uh, that player, that's a huge advantage. That's going to be a big loss for UCLA. Yep. All right. Let's get let's get to the what happened on the court today, though, and uh, we will begin by trying to get the screen share to work. That's uh, uh, if you call sometimes. But we had three championships decided today. Uh, beginning, let's start with the first one that was decided of the three, the Southland Conference. And Griggs, this was a heck of a game between Corpus Christi and Northwestern State. Uh, kind of uh, back and forth after Northwestern State had a big first half lead that that they lost. Yeah, uh, we thought it was going to be a good game. It really was. These were clearly the two best teams they had been all year. Uh, Northwestern State was just all over the map. They had a fantastic season as a whole, had some really big wins, a big win against TCU. I want to say they had a big win against Southern Miss as well. But in conference play, Texas uh, Corpus Christi was just a little more consistent. Um, And, you know, they got the win today. Uh, So, Tamu CC back to back years the Islanders going dancing. Yes, uh, and we lost. Oh, crap, the screen where's share. my video? Yeah, we lost the screen share there for a second, but uh, right. uh, as I try to free throws, as I try to get this back up again here, uh, Dorman, the other, the second chip, the second conference championship game that we had today was in the Patriot League. Uh, where there it is. it's coming up, it's coming up. I had to get the we lost the screen share there for a second, Griggs. Uh, Colgate, uh, as we almost thought they would do, they just, just they just took care of Lafayette fairly easily. They jump out to leads and they don't let teams back in it. It reminds me a lot of what Vermont does in the NEC. They just throttle these teams in their conference. They devastate them early and they don't let them back into it. This was Colgate's tournament. They played great the whole way through on their home court. This is their third year in the tournament in a row. Uh, a lot of times we've seen when these these 14, 15 seeded uh, schools that have been there more than once, they know the routine, they know the flow now. Sometimes they feel more comfortable. They might be able to give someone a scare. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so three, yeah I was going to say three straight, not only three straight, but four out of the last five Patriot yeah. League tournament championships won by yeah, Colgate. Yeah. Uh, Colgate kind of disappointing here, failing to win a single game by more than 20 points. <laughs> uh yeah, nineteen points, eighteen points, seventeen points. Yeah, it was, it was. They just dominated this tournament. Um, yeah. The last conference tournament championship that just went final a few moments ago was the Big Sky tournament. And Griggs, the Northern Arizona Cinderella run did come to an end, uh, even though the, the final score was close and it kind of was that close. Yeah, uh, Montana State just kind of led the whole way and never let North Arizona catch up. They did. I mean, Northern Arizona kept it within arm's length. I, I got to actually give them credit for the way they played in the game. It, the way it opened up until the first media timeout, it looked like um, Montana State was going to blow it open and it would be sort of a repeat of the Summit League, the Patriot League. But they, they hung in there and they gave themselves a chance to win. This is a team that was certainly better than what their record showed. I think they showed that in the tournament and they certainly played better than what I was expecting them to. I was half expecting them to lose to Idaho. Um, what a way to finish. And you kind of wonder like, well, 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 what about the team that beat them? What about the team that everyone wants to hear about, which is can Montana state win a game in the NCAA tournament? Should we be picking them in our bracket? 
probably not. You know, they're they're going to wind up on the 15 line. They they had an excellent year, and when it was all said and done, like uh, Eastern Washington had the long street, but by the time the tournament was over, uh, Montana State had the most big sky wins and was clearly, I thought, the best and most deserving team. Good enough to beat a two or a three. I, I'm going with probably not, but a good team. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, a very good team here, actually. Back to back Big Sky uh, tournament championships for the for, for the Bobcats here. But uh, Dorman, let's move over to some of the other conferences that were in earlier rounds, starting with the ACC, which began with the end of Jim Beheim's career uh, that went away on a uh, Damien Williamson shot with about two tenths of a second left. Yeah, uh, they were trailing in the first half, took a lead in the second half. I'm talking about Wake Forest now. Gave the lead up, tied, like you said, Chad, and they buried a three with about a half a second to go uh, to end Jim Beheim's, uh coaching career at Syracuse. Um, it was a pretty good game, actually. I, uh, I enjoyed it, and uh, Wake Forest moves on, and they get the Hurricanes next. Did, do you think they have a shot against the Hurricanes? Miami, I'm high on Miami. We know Griggs is high on Miami. My worry is they're not big. If they're not hitting shots, they're liable to the ups. They're, you know, they could have the upset against them. So they need to hit their outside shots. I'd like Miami tomorrow to move on. Okay. Uh, Griggs, the other games here, um, Pitt took care of Georgia Tech. Uh, well, that's one way of putting it. Uh, they, they had to sweat a lot in that game. They were behind for a lot, for a fair amount of that game. Uh, Pitt, was, Pitt was up 13 at halftime. It was Georgia Tech that came storing back. Yeah. You got it backwards, but go ahead. Oh, well, they, I mean, yeah, yeah, Georgia Tech came storming back. Like I said, Pitt was ahead for a lot of that. <laughs> but, uh, um, it's not but really. Greg, you, you think that sealed the bid for the uh, Panthers? I, I do. And I'm really excited about this Duke Pitt game tomorrow. Uh, everybody on Hoops HD seemingly picked Duke to win the tournament. I've been saying Pitt is undervalued and underrated. So here's the square off. Like they've got tanks like Joby and Chad and all of them, and I've got my BB gun. And if Pitt <laughs> wins tomorrow, I'm going to declare myself the winner with my BB gun. Very uh, this debate. We got John Sleeka joining us. We thought he might be, be hopping in here at some point. First of all, good morning. And second of all, uh, uh, we're in the middle of the ACC, John, where the late two games were complete blowouts as North Carolina took care of BC and NC State took care of uh, Tech. Uh, so maybe the better question is, what about these two gate two games of the bottom half tomorrow, Virginia, North Carolina, Clemson, NC State. I mean, that alone isn't going to uh, put North Carolina in the field, for example. It does at least set the table for them, should they be able to beat Virginia and end up getting a, another quality win out of this one. I think NC State, another team that survived a disaster, at least they didn't step on a Lego against Virginia Tech right here. Clemson is also another team that sells. They're going to need a couple of uh, major wins just to get consideration right here. Now, Virginia was actually my pick to end up winning the ACC, not the uh, Blue Devils, albeit the fact that they're getting completely healthy right now. So my guess is we'll probably see NC State and uh, Virginia end up winning in the bottom half of the bracket here. Yeah, that that would especially with Clemson. I th well, I think both if Carolina and Clemson both lose, this might be the end of their seasons. Other than you know NIT or something like that. Uh, he but. he's not on with us tonight, but Joby, uh, a who alum, if North Carolina wins this game and we have to talk about them get, possibly getting in, I am personally holding Joby responsible. <laughs> okay, that was the day in the ACC. Let's jump over to the to the day uh, in the Big Ten. I, let's start with this here at Dorman. Uh, how about those Ohio State Buckeyes who were up three billion points <laughs> on Wisconsin and actually let somehow let Wisconsin come all the way back and almost catch them in the end of this game? Yeah, if, Ohio, if uh, Wisconsin hits this three when they were down only three with a minute to go, they might have and probably would have lost. Ohio State does not not does not know how to close out a game. Um, they really struggled in the second half. Wisconsin really dominated the entire second half, but they built themselves a huge lead. They move on and they get Iowa tomorrow afternoon. 
Yeah, now Wisconsin very is sweating a lot. I don't think they're going to get selected Good on night. Sunday, but no. uh, it, it, it nope. would be a huge long shot for them, to, a huge surprise for them to get in. Uh, the other I, game, I, uh, I, I told you all last night that, that Minnesota was going to beat Nebraska. This Minnesota team has been playing very good basketball the last two weeks compared to what they played all season. And uh, no shock to me, Minnesota gets the win over Nebraska. Okay, yeah, uh, the four of us have been playing good basketball compared to what Minnesota had been doing for the well, last couple of hey. weeks. Uh, um, but, Greg, we got four games tomorrow, and they're four fascinating. Well, at least two of the four are fascinating, I think. The Michigan-Rutgers game, Illinois-Penn State, huge bubble implications. Iowa-Ohio State, yeah. Iowa, Ohio State, Maryland-Minnesota. Uh, these much, might just be about let's get rid of Ohio State and Minnesota out of this tournament. <laughs> Uh, that might be what it is. Uh, Maryland, oh boy, they're, they're going to win tomorrow and everybody's going to, to you, you know, this was one of the two road games they won this year, Minnesota. So I do, as rough as I've been on Maryland, I do think they can win this one tomorrow. Uh, if they don't, I'm, I might not stop laughing for an hour, but, um, yeah, the big game, I think, well, well, too, like minute Illinois, Penn state, because, I think Illinois is pretty safe. Penn State, if they win tomorrow, is reasonably safe. And if they win on Friday, I think they're a lock. But Michigan Rutgers, too, um, because the it sets up with a game against Purdue. And obviously, if one of those teams is able to win that, it's not even close. But it, the question is, if Michigan loses tomorrow, I think they're done. But if they win tomorrow, is that enough? I don't know that that's enough yeah. for, for Michigan. I, I think it's a bigger game for Rutgers. I think Rutgers with the win tomorrow is probably going to be in. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'm a Rutgers guy, so, you know, maybe I've given a little extra to my team here. But uh, Michigan, if they win, ooh, I, 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 they may need to be Purdue as well, which I know is a tall order. But, you know, that they don't have what Rutgers has at the top of the profile, which is that win at Purdue already right. on, in there. And the um, thing is, Michigan has been playing. I want to say that their last two losses are have been in overtime. They're really good teams, so they've been playing better. They it are just double, took them a little double, too double long overtime, to get there. At, double time overtime at Illinois, single overtime at Indiana. But they're losses. They're not wins. Um, mm, right. Uh, Penn, Penn State Sleek is the other team that has that big game against Illinois. This is a. I know they lose this game, it becomes a very interesting profile, and and, and I get you could say, hey, listen. They beat Illinois twice this season. They, you know, why do they have to beat them a third time? But to which I would respond, but it gives you a chance for yet another game, uh, and that's why you need to win this game. And they also have a uh, tier one A win at uh, Northwestern to kick off the month of March. So every little bit is going to help the Nittany Lions at this point. Also, getting that last second win against Maryland, I think, puts them on the. Uh, Good side of the uh, cut line for the time being right here. If they can also get that opportunity for a win against Northwestern as well, then I could say Penn State is going to be safely in the field. It would not shock me, even with a loss of Penn State made it right now, especially if somebody like Rutgers drops out by losing to Michigan tomorrow. So we'll see. Um, um, but a high stakes pre quarterfinal round. Yes. Uh, Every that's one something of those you games. see very often. Yeah. Uh, I, I, All four you know, of those. Yeah, I, I, I would say also let's let's pay attention to Ohio State, but the way they fell apart late against Wisconsin, I, I, I don't have any faith that this team could, even though they've got talent, I don't think they can beat Iowa. Right. Um, you had declared that you were deleting, that you were eliminating them anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Dorman, Big 12 opening day. West Virginia with a win over Texas Tech and Oklahoma State with a win over Oklahoma, and neither game was really that close. I, I mean, especially not the second halves. No, West Virginia kept Texas Tech at length. Um, like I thought, Texas Tech look, looked a little disinterested. They looked like they were out of it. I don't blame them. It's been a hard probably 10 days on campus and all the media with the coaching situation. And uh, um, uh, um, Oklahoma State, uh, for the third time, knocks off the Sooners. Um, that's big for Oak State. Um, because now they got another big chance against Texas. Like you just talked about in the Big Ten, some of those teams need to win to get their opportunity. That's exactly what the Cowboys have tomorrow. If they beat Texas, they really move the needle. And then teams like Rutgers, Michigan loser really start sweating. Penn State loser, you know, 
Oklahoma State starts to move up as some of these Big Ten teams lose tomorrow. Yeah, and look that's at a the, really good point. Yeah, but yeah. Gr- Gr- Grace, look at this round of of look at these eight teams that's on these four games: Kansas, West Virginia, Baylor, Iowa State, Texas, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, TCU. I'm going to steal one of your lines. This is better than that we'd see we'd see in 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 the final eight teams in a regional at the, in the NCAA tournament. I, I, I think it is like K State, TCU alone. That's that's. You, you know, that's a 3-6 seed. That, that might be the seeds they have in the NCAA tournament, maybe even TCU getting a little bit of a better one. And the stakes here, most of these are showcases. I think West Virginia has done enough. I think they're in. The only team that really kind of needs to play their way in is Oklahoma State, and maybe they've done enough too. But if Oki, like if the, if the Pokes beat Texas tomorrow – I, I know that we're going to go through our mock committee process, and I know we don't have Ty Tell here with us, but we, we can safely assume that that will put the pokes in, won't yeah, we? Yeah, I, I would not be shocked even with the loss of Oklahoma State is in now, I, but it's going to yeah. be very close without with a loss. With a win, I completely agree with you. Uh, but this yeah. should be a great game. Um, Sleeka, who, g- g- give me four winners for tomorrow. I'm going to say Kansas definitely wins the uh, first one right here as well as BMI overall winner i think baylor it's going to be tough for iowa state to end up beating the bears a a third time right here i i think if there was if i was going to go with one upset it's going to be tcu now that they seem to be healthy again and i'll stick with uh texas to win here for the time being yeah i I like the tcu pick and i that you can't i in terms of seeding, it's an upset, and that's about all it would be. I don't even know that there would really be much right. of an upset. Uh, but let's be. move things along to the Big East Conference. And, <laughs> and, and, and let, me, let me just throw this in here. Villanova blew out Georgetown. The St. John's Butler game, uh, St. John's got a big early, early lead and kind of held off any runs that Butler had. But what a game between Seton Hall and DePaul. <laughs> I have, don't think I've ever seen a team play worse basketball in the final <laughs> minute of the game that I saw Seton Hall play in totally choking this thing away, turning it over repeatedly when all you had to do was, was inbound the ball, catch it, get fouled, and shoot a couple free throws to win this thing. It was unbelievable. And somehow uh, three free throws uh, to take the lead. And then, as if that wasn't good enough, Griggs, <laughs> the last play of the game, Seton Hall comes down, puts up a shot, there's a goaltending call at the buzzer, which you almost never see. Yeah. And they review it, and it was not goaltending. They overturn it, and DePaul has the victory. <laughs> yeah, it, I, it was – by now you've probably seen it because there's no way if you're watching this show that you weren't a big enough fan to know what happened. But I, I have not ever, ever seen – a, a, not just to end a game, but a goaltending call where it was ruled below the cylinder, but it was actually tipped over the cylinder. So it was almost a reverse goaltend, which is not a goaltend. And the game ended. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I can't get into the story of, of my experience watching this game. I, I'll put it this way. I was watching it live and didn't realize it was live. I thought the game was over and that DePaul, for some reason, I thought DePaul had already won. And it wasn't until they were reviewing the play that I realized that the game was, in fact, not over. So what? A... Uh, well, we've got these four games to buy here. Sle- uh, let you, yeah, Salika, let me start with you with the bottom two games. Xavier, DePaul, your Xavier Musketeers, Creighton, Villanova. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are DePaul could be an interesting opponent just because they do hit the uh, three-pointer well. They're also a very good foul shooting team. But if you also saw the final four seconds of the game, DePaul played literally no defense up to that goal 10, just <laughs> trying to avoid a foul right there. And when they met at the uh, Cintas Center, it was a, a different story from what happened from the teams in Chicago where Xavier just couldn't hit the uh, broadside of a barn. I do think the Musketeers are going to win somewhat comfortably in the seven o'clock game, and then the nightcap. Then you're looking about you're looking at whether Ooh. or not Creighton is going to be able to defend a, against a team like Villanova that finally seems to have found its rhythm with uh, Moore and uh, Cam Whitmore in the lineup right now. I'm still going to go with Villanova to end up meeting Xavier in the semis as far as the bottom half goes. 
Okay, let's look at it. Dorman. How about the top half here? Uh, does Marquette have anything to worry about with St. John's? And how about this interesting UConn Providence game? I think Marquette does. If you remember, just last Saturday, St. John's had an incredible uh, comeback against Marquette in Milwaukee and just almost knocked them off. They came up just short. Um, they hit a big shot at the end, Marquette, but St. John's was really came back strong in the second half. They were down 10 or 12, came all the way back, like I said. Now the Johnnies are playing back in the garden. Uh, in this game, they'll have the home crowd there. They will. This is their city. Uh, Milwaukee will bring people. They always do. But if Marquette is not on their game tomorrow, St. John's can, ease, can win this game. I would be very careful if I was Marquette and make sure your energy level is high right out of the gates. Okay. The other game, Connecticut and Providence, great game. These two teams do not like each other, and the fans really hate each other. I <laughs> do like UConn in this tournament, oh. and uh, I like them to be Providence tomorrow. Providence is unfortunately going the wrong way at a very important time. Yeah. Griggs, it was a first round day in yeah. the Mountain West Conference. Today. I'm actually going to pick up an upset here, real quick. I'm going to go with the Paul over Xavier. Um, just Stil Stilik, are you at the Big East? Uh, no, I'm. Oh, never mind. No, I'm going with Xavier. <laughs> uh, uh, Greg, Four great Greg's, games, though. Yeah. Greg's Mountain West Conference, ooh, and ooh, ooh. talk about a couple. Let's talk about some some pretty good games here. Uh, beginning with. Well, well, I guess the first two were really good. The New Mexico, Wyoming, New Mexico kind of started to pull away, pulled away late, but uh, Colorado State, uh, and and then the UNLV game went to overtime. Uh, so, yeah. your thoughts on those first two? Just that they were kind of exciting games. Uh, Colorado State, Fresno State, in particular, it was sort of another bizarre ending. I, I guess my thoughts on these games, Chad, is that it was kind of exciting. I think UNLV, you like to think that this is on their home court and they have some momentum going and Boise State doesn't always get their motors started. So if there was going to be a potential upset tomorrow, uh, that's the one I would circle. But what I think we saw today is uh, teams that are lining up on the wrong end of mismatches tomorrow. Right. The uh, Colorado State game, it, it was fascinating because Isaiah Stevens put this incredible move on to give them the two-point lead. Fresno State then with the long inbounds, play, yeah. catches the ball, call times at, calls timeout, then turns around and throws up the three anyhow, and it goes in. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it doesn't count because he called timeout. He called timeout because his coach told him to call timeout. <laughs> the coach then drew up, drew up a play, which the play he drew up obviously was exactly which they ran, which was turn the ball over on the inbound. Yeah. Uh, over coaching again on these timeouts, uh, really, really over coaching. Um, but that said, here, um, I guess, I guess, Greg, you, you said we got chalk across the board all four games tomorrow. Uh, may I, I think UNLV might make Boise sweat. This New Mexico Utah State game is interesting. It's because I, I don't know where New Mexico is in the committee's mind they're real schizophrenic they have not been good at all down the stretch but their profile still tops out pretty well particularly with the win over saint mary's and they got another one against san diego state so if they win tomorrow i think they're on the board at least i don't know if it'll get them selected but it, i think they're on the board so kind of some important games here but utah state has just been looking better a lot better than new mexico has these last few weeks wyoming not good and new mexico while they won by 11 they did not exactly bury them the way that you would expect a tournament team to bury the last place team in a conference like this if you've been following us all year you would clearly know that new mexico is in the uh, back range puppet yeah uh, and these are three real big games tomorrow, minus the San Diego State. Nevada claims they are at, at large worthy. They have got to win that game tomorrow. Boise State, I think they're on the good side of the bubble, but you don't want to lose to UNLV and have the committee that see that as their last uh, tape of you. And same with Utah State. Utah State is claiming they're at large worthy. Well, if you are, you got to beat New Mexico. You do. Three huge games in the Mountain West tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, San Jose State, 10 miles, nine wins away, just nine from their national championship. Okay. Uh, Sleeka, any upsets in these four games? And let's move on. 
If I'm looking for an upset, it probably would be that uh, UNLV and uh, Boise State right there, which I think the Broncos are really going to be sweating come Selection Sunday. But I ultimately think they're going to get their uh, suite at the uh, Dayton Holiday Inn. It was first round day in the Pac-12 where Colorado, uh, first of all, you know, actually a real impressive performance by Julian Hammond in this game with KJ Simpson out. His, his backup, Julian Hammond, comes in as a great game for Colorado. They've advanced over Washington. Wazoo takes out Caracal. Stanford, surprisingly over Utah. Uh, Arizona State's a 63-57 win over Oregon State. I'll get that in here. Dorman, any thoughts on what happened in these four games? Um, Washington State looked good. Cal is one of the worst D1 teams I've ever seen. Um, Arizona State was always ahead of Oregon State. The Beavers, they were up between 10 and 6 the whole way. Never really sweat. But uh, tomorrow they have their big opportunity. Uh, most people believe USC is on the right side of the bubble. I'm with that. But if Arizona State wants to make a claim and a run in an at-large bid, they have to win this game tomorrow. With a loss, they are done. Because we went through the Big Ten and we just saw the Mountain West. Someone is going to win. If they lose, they're out. Uh, Greg, these other three games are a little bit interesting. UCLA, again, shorthanded now. Uh, you know how, how, how can they do – against the Colorado team with a little bit of life to them without Clark. Uh, Washington State's a team that's been playing incredibly well, seven wins in a row going to this game against Oregon. And Stanford beat Arizona earlier this year. Yeah, I I don't think Stanford beats Arizona tomorrow. Uh, The UCLA-Colorado game is interesting just because of the storyline of Clark being out. Whether they win the game or not, I, I don't. UCLA, the only real debate here is are they a one or are they a two? So, I mean, the stakes aren't that high, but it's more of a litmus test of how well can they play without such a key player. Um, Wazoo, I, I do want to say we, we've seen it before. We saw it very recently. A team that was not inside the bubble uh, got hot won the auto bid and went to the Elite Eight and almost went to the Final Four. Is Wazoo going to the Final Four this year? Uh, I like the way this Wazoo team's playing. Yeah. I really do. And if UCLA is shorthanded, uh, I could see them in the championship game now. Yeah, I can uh, too. I uh, really can. And, 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 and if it's, and if it's yeah, not it's Arizona hard. they're playing there, I think they can win. So if Arizona gets upset in that semifinal, uh, I could see they Wazoo They beat Arizona this, this year. They did. Well, yeah. At home. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why I, said, I don't think they can beat him again. That's why I want oh, somebody yeah. else there. Um, okay. I'm going to be convinced there's something in the water if they do pull this off. Keep in mind the women for Washington State have already pulled off their first ever Pac-12 conference title, knocking out uh, Stanford and I believe UCLA in the process. Uh, let's go on to the SEC though, Stalika. Opening round games: Ole Miss beat South Carolina, LSU uh, built up a pretty big halftime lead and then uh, held on against Georgia. It's good for them and that they'll get at least uh, one win out of their uh, <laughs> week right here. I can't see either of them beating Tennessee or Vanderbilt in uh, Nashville. I think what's going to be interesting is watching Auburn get, it's not going to be as much of a uh, must win after they beat Tennessee, but they could really use a, a win against Arkansas. That's more solidly in the field right here. Mississippi state, they're going to have the most sense of urgency with uh, Florida in their first matchup. Yeah, because that's not a win that helps them, but it's a loss that hurts them. Especially since Florida shorthanded and no longer have the services of Colin Castleton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about uh, any upsets in these four games here? Florida, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Auburn, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, LSU, uh, Dorman. Uh, by seed, I do like Mississippi State to knock off Florida. I don't think that's much of an upset. And Vanderbilt as well as they have played recently, and I'm not real high on this LSU team. I could see that game being tight. Okay. Uh, I, I could see that as well. I think Auburn Arkansas is going to be a going to be a good game. That's a, great That's game. a real uh, good game. Arkansas, That's Arkansas, Arkansas game. has lost a few games recently too. They could really use a win here to get back, you know, roll, get moving again as we move towards the NCAA tournament. Yeah, both both of them, they're in. Yeah. Both yeah. Of them, yeah. Yeah, both of them could really use that one. Uh, yeah. Not that they need to get in. I think both teams will find their way in no matter what happens, especially because neither one is going to be suffering a bad loss in this tournament. Um, yeah. uh, let's jump over to the A10 now, and it was. 
uh, second round day in the A-10. And uh, Dorman, your thoughts on these four games here with uh, Davidson, George Mason, St. Joe's, and LaSalle all, all advancing? Yeah, some upsets today. Um, I like Fordham to make a move in this tournament. Uh, I really do. I think they've been a little underrated uh, all season long. They've done a nice job. Um, they, they, if they could get to the finals, that would be super exciting just for the, how bad this program has been and where they're going. It, it would be a great story. I like Dayton to end St. Joe's run, although they finally put two games together, St. Joe's. St. Louis, George Mason, that's a toy, it's a coin flip. That's a, a real tight game. And uh, I like the winner to play VCU. Yeah. Uh, the- how, how, about, how about, though, Fran Dunphy making a run, two wins in a yeah. row here. Can he make a run? I mean, I think Fran is beatable. I think – Staten is beatable. I don't know that VCU or St. Louis is beatable, but uh, for, for this team, but huh. I, I, I don't, I, I don't think, I, I think the chalk holds tomorrow. Fordham is, is geeked up for this. Uh, they kind of got lost in the shuffle with how poor the Atlantic 10 was collectively. Uh, but Fordham really is one of the, more incredible stories in college basketball, even if it's sort of an under the radar story, 24 wins this year. Like in my whole life, Fordham has never been good. I think 90% of the time, they're not even good enough to win the Northeast conference. So for them to be alive and and that, like if you've been following the fan base and the Twitters, this fan base is jacked to the moon. Uh, I, they're going to have more people, in the Barkley Center tomorrow, than what Rose Hill Gym seats. Uh, uh, it, Griggs, I'm, Griggs, I'm taking LaSalle in this game. I'm taking Fordham. <laughs> mm-hmm. Taking. Um, I'm this taking is the, at the end of the day, this is Fordham. Uh and it's LaSalle. Yo, I'm but taking, it's LaSalle. LaSalle's been in the tournament in recent years. Had LaSalle went to a Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, thing is, it's been and... ten years since the uh, North Philly floater put the Explorers in the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, even though St. Louis George Mason is a four-five game, I think there's a big gap between those two teams. I don't. I don't think Mason pulls the upset there. Um, I'm. But... I, I got Fordham fever since the Penguins backed that on me. I'm this conference did get crazy. Look for anyone. Anyone could win that conference tournament. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of craziness, dear Dorman, what a day <laughs> at the curtain down yeah. in Frisco, <laughs> Texas. Two games at the same time, one building. Uh, at least at the night, Captain. The early game was just a single game, but uh, all three of these games were great games too. Yeah, they were. If you don't know what we're talking about, there's an actual tarp curtain. <laughs> drawn between the two courts, literally, to separate them. And there's both games are going on at the same time. It's the most incredible thing you've ever yeah. seen. You think you're in uh, the fourth grade you, you, AAU tournament. If you're watching the games, it's incredible. You you, you get to hear things like <laughs> like like live from court from court. from court A in Frisco, te- Texas, and yeah. and we've got a close game here. Just and we've got a close one next door as well. I mean, it's uh, but but what I don't know how games? they don't get. I don't know how they don't get the whistles mixed up, but uh, Western <laughs> Kentucky held off UTEP. Western Kentucky moves on to play the Owls. Florida Atlantic, the story of Conference USA and the story all year long almost in college basketball. Will Florida Atlantic make a move in the tournament and solidify and put the doubters out? Uh, some people say they don't belong. I think they belong. I think they're really Really good. La Tech and Fla Int went, uh, I believe it was overtime, wasn't overtime. it? Yep, it, it yeah. was overtime. It was a big run late by FIU to force the overtime, yep. Crazy. Miss free throws, hit a three, throw the ball away. Like, sometimes it drives you mad. But it was a good game, and it was the two teams competed. Winner gets North Texas. So La Tech, North Texas. I like North Texas to go to the finals in this tournament. I'll t- tell you what, though, La Tech gave gave Florida Atlantic a heck of a game in their regular season yeah. finale. Uh, they are a live wire team. It would not shock me if they upset North Texas. Uh, Griggs, the game of the night, though, maybe was the third one. With yeah. This race San Antonio game and UTSA got the ball and had the shot that looked like they won it at the buzzer. Uh, like a tenth of a second too late off. Of his right. Uh, uh, a really 
rough, you know, long season for the runners comes to sort of a heartbreaking end on a last second shot that didn't quite beat the buzzer that would have won them a game. They initially counted it, but they went and reviewed it. And like on a frame by frame basis, it was, it, it was one frame late. I don't know what measurement of time that is, but somewhere <laughs> around not a very, very short. Um, as far as the games tomorrow, I, 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 I really hope the chalk holds because I think if it does, the semis are actually just going to be wild. Uh, well, the, the the one game that 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 I that I think can go either way is that four or five game, and uh, either yeah. team is is a live team though. Middle Tennessee Shaw yeah. could be a could be a really good game there. Yeah, it could be. And tomorrow is it's the greatest day on the sports calendar. It's the Thursday of Championship Week, but it is also Curtain Day. We don't get it in the semifinals. Uh, no, we but we do. We will have two two curtains going on here with the first yeah. two games and then the curtain with the second two games, North oh, Texas La Tech, UAB Rice and the uh, late one. Yeah. UAB also, you know, a game team we haven't discussed Watch much here. Yeah. Uh, and if you're at the, like if you buy a ticket and you're at the venue, you can walk around the concourse and go back and forth between games. It's incredible. Uh, <laughs> these, uh, Salika, the story of March last year was the run that St. Peter's made out of the two seat of the Metro Atlantic to, to, to steal the bid when Iona got, got upset early and then go all the way to the Elite Eight in the NCAA tournament as a 15 seed. This year, St. Peter's finished 10th out of 11 teams <laughs> of the conference. Uh, everybody has gone for that team, including the head coach. Yet, Tuesday night, the upset. Head coach is gone, too, okay, thanks to the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway. and tonight, though, uh, after Iona rolled over Mount St. Mary's, St. Peter's led Ryder the entire way. Uh, well, keep I, in mind, there was one point in the season where it looked like we were just trading places. Like, okay, now Siena's going to be the team to beat. Now Ryder's going to be the team to beat. Now Quinnipiac's going to be the team to beat. Well, I don't think we need to worry about Ryder anymore right here. Yeah, but but the Peacocks are, have this marked magic that I don't know. They're not going to play again until Friday, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, here they go, and, and, and somebody's got to beat this team, or they may end up in the Final Four this year. Who knows? Um, but uh, uh, but we've got two more games coming up tomorrow night that are, especially the CNN Niagara game, I think could be a real good one, Griggs. Marist uh, showed some life against Manhattan. They got Quinnipiac. Yeah, I, I like this Quinnipiac team. Maris looked good the other night. Uh, there's been a lot of nights where they haven't looked good. There's been a lot more nights where Quinnipiac has. Uh, I, I think Quinnipiac rules. You might recall that they were a team that in November and December we were particularly excited about. They they still had a really good year. Well, one they, the they, they, they were one of the last undefeated teams left yeah, in the nation, were. actually. Yeah. yeah, one of the last seven or eight of them, yep. Yeah, and like uh, they, they've had a really good year this year. And I, I just like them. I don't know if I like them to win the whole thing. I don't think they're quite where Iona is, but I think they win tomorrow and, and win against the the Peacocks on Friday. Well, Dorman, what about Sienna Niagara? Who you got? I'm taking Sienna because I want to see Sienna Iona again, part three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Miak, it was first round. It, it was quarterfinal day, only two quarterfinals, and they were complete – uh, ass kickings, honestly, by the top two seeds. Yeah, if you they were, you, you picked a good day to to skip it. If you so, didn't. I'm not even going to go over those two games. Let's go straight because straight uh, Griggs to the preview of tomorrow's two games because this Eastern Shore Morgan State game, especially, I think, could be a real good one. And then Norfolk yeah. State gets the Fighting Juan Dixons at night. Right. Uh, I, I like Noan Dixon. So the storyline here, to me, Eastern Shore uh, has gone from being one of the worst teams in the nation consistently for many years to fourth in the conference. And for a while, it looked like they might actually contend for first place. It would be fun because it has been so long. I don't even remember the last time to see him win one conference tournament game just to see him get to the semis. I think Howard is way over their head, but I don't think Morgan State is, and it would be fun to see them win that one. And Norfolk, our preseason favorite, uh, still our postseason favorite. Uh, will they sleepwalk or will the Juan Dixon, fighting Juan Dixons, knock them out? Uh, yeah, I, I could see either one happening. Yeah, uh, they'll either win this game huge or they'll lose. It's kind of what I'm looking at here. Uh, yeah, Dorman. It was f also 
two quarterfinals say in the SWAC, and I told you it was going to happen last night, and sure did. enough, it yes. did. Eight seed Texas Southern knocking off Alcorn State, and they were up big in this game. It actually was not even as close as that final score. Uh, Grambling also took care of Bethune pretty easily. I give you a lot of credit, Chad. I thought Alcorn State was going to come in and take care of business. But like you said, Texans, Texas Southern was banged up all year. They put it together. You told us they had been the the top class of the SWAC, and they have been, and they showed why. And they did look healthy, and they looked fresh. And Alcorn State looked slow, and they were beaten out of the gate and never looked like they were interested. Grambling absolutely rolled Bethune-Cookman, and I still like Grambling to win this tournament. Yeah, I, I, Alcorn State off to the NIT with a probably an eight seed. Yes. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, Stalika, what about these two games tomorrow? Southern versus Alabama A and M, Jackson State versus Prairie View. I'm going to stand by one of my predictions from last night, and it's going to end up being a Grambling and a Southern in the title game right here. I don't, I don't. I don't classic. think Prairie View is going to be knocking off Jackson State, though. That may be a little bit too much to ask of them. I could see that game going either way. I think that I think that game is going to be close. I do like the pick of Southern over Alabama A and M, though. Um, big okay. That was it for today's games. Actually, we've got yeah. two conferences that were that were returning to that had the day off. Uh, Greg, starting in the Big West, where it is quarterfinal Ooh. round day: Irvine versus Bakersfield, Fullerton versus Hawaii, Santa Barbara versus Cal Poly, and Riverside versus Davis. Yeah, uh, the Eaters, I, I like them the role in that one. Although the 1 8 Big West game, it, it always seems like, even in years where you never think it will be, that it always seems like it's a crazy game. So <laughs> maybe just out of tradition, uh, does Bakersfield pull an upset or at least take it down to the wire? I don't know. You all like Hawaii. I know they've been playing well. I, I don't see them doing going all that far on the mainland. It's totally different when they're not at home. Uh, what about the bottom half of this bracket here? That, uh, uh, I like Dor- I like the Gaucho. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're going to go. I was going to say, Dorman, do, do you think Cal Poly can pull off another one? And how about Davis and Riverside? Davis Riverside's up for grabs. I'm going to pick Riverside, but nothing would surprise me there. I think this whole tournament could get wild. And I like Santa Barbara to beat Cal Poly, but like Cal Poly, like, they were they Long Beach State was a better team all year long, and they destroyed Long Beach State Cal Poly last night, two nights ago. I mean, they they looked like decent for the first time in a while. Um, so nothing would shock me here, but I am picking Barbara and Riverside. Yeah, I okay. like how the All California Classic opts to play their tournament in Henderson, Nevada. <laughs> I, it's Las Vegas. More fun in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, we are back in action in the WAC as well, Salika. We've got quarterfinals. Sam Houston, California Baptist, Seattle Grand Canyon, Utah Valley Tarleton, and the Beehive game between Southern Utah and Utah Tech. If I were to pick one uh, transitional team that would probably end up causing some damage, it probably would be a Utah Tech right here. Hmm. I still think Utah Valley is going to be my pick to win the whole thing. Seattle is another wild card that I think could potentially be enough of a mo- noisemaker to get to the championship game at least. Yeah, Grand Canyon uh, lost one of their best players a few like mid February, so they've been a little shorthanded. Um, I do like the pick of Seattle there. Um, Dorman, California Baptist doesn't have a shot against Sam Houston, do they? I do not think so. I love the way Sam Houston plays defense. They are all over you from the get-go. I still am going with Houston to win this tournament. Yeah. Uh, we have two more conferences getting into play t- tomorrow that have not yet k- tipped off. Uh, the first of those being the American Griggs, where yeah. it is first round day. Let's start with these three games. South Florida, East Carolina, UCF, SMU, Wichita, Tulsa. Anything worth watching in any of these games here? UCF, I don't know what happened to him, them. There were times that this during the year they looked like a top 25 team. Uh, the last three or four weeks were not one of those times. I, I do think they win tomorrow, and they have it in them to play really well. So Houston, <clears throat> I, I think the bigger game is on Friday. We'll get to that tomorrow, if, assuming UCF even gets past SMU. But what we're sort of <laughs> – I, 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 oh, I, not, to, not to crap on – 
games that we're trying to preview and build up, but I think the storylines here, Chad, are who's going to be on the short end of a lopsided game on Friday. And uh, let's talk about though the entire tournament here. Uh, anybody? Let me start the Sleeka. Is it Houston and Memphis, and does Houston win it all? I actually think this is the one tournament where we could get a major surprise on Sunday. I am taking the Bearcats to be the uh, the surprise champion out of the American <sighs> right here. Ah. That's a hell of a pick. Cincinnati has wow. been playing really well down the stretch. They've got a big hurdle in the semis. They got a big hurdle. They, the, they got the, a big hurdle the quarters before that. I don't know. If they get by Temple. They could, that I I don't like the pick, but uh, you know I could be wrong. I'd, if I was going to pick a crazy team to win this, I'd go Tulane. Me too. I'm with I'd you, Chad. <laughs> uh, Dorman, who do you have actually winning it? Uh, I'm going to, I, it's really tight. I think Memphis, I would like to see Memphis Tulane in, in a Saturday semifinal. I really think that would be a good matchup. I'm going to take Memphis to beat Houston the third time. So Memphis. I like that pick. Uh, boy, I'm with you. Griggs. I'm going Houston. Yeah. I thought that's the ah. go wrong with that pick either. <laughs> yeah. uh, finally, one more conference that, that starts tomorrow. It is First Ooh, quarterfinal round day in the Mid American in the MAC. Uh, Stalika, you're our Ohio guy, and these are all a bunch of Ohio teams with only a couple exceptions. Uh, Toledo gets Miami, Ohio, Ball State, Ohio, U, Kent State, Northern Illinois, Akron, Buffalo. Uh, the big thing is, can we get those top four seeds into the quarterfinals? Uh, sorry, into the That's semifinals, amazing. or do we get, or do we get anybody upset tomorrow? I think Toledo is a team that has to be on upset alert right here. Miami wow. has actually been playing their best basketball of the year. I don't think it's going to be enough to beat the Rockets right here. I think Ball State is another team that I think could be a surprise team that ends up in the uh, championship game. I don't know if they're going to get past the wagon wheel winner. I don't see either Northern Illinois or Buffalo upsetting Kent State or Akron on the way. I'm going to go the- with uh, yeah. Kent State to end up winning the whole thing here. Griggs? Yeah, I, a, a, a potential slash probable wagon wheel semifinal. We're, we're used to seeing that in the championship game. I'm going with Kent State as well. Uh, I think the chalk does hold tomorrow with all four. I, I just think that there's a big gap between four and five, although Ohio has shown signs of life. Uh, and I do think that any one of those four teams could win this, but I'm going to go with Kent State. I've been big on them all year so why stop now i also want to to... preface this by saying if kent state does win in the semifinal this year please do not do what you do last year (laughs) do not post any celebrations onto the internet Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Uh, i'm taking toledo dorman who do you got i would love to see toledo play kent state in the final Uh, i think those two teams are are much better than the rest of the conference and it's a tremendous rivalry and to be a tremendous game with a bit on the line. So Kent State, Toledo in the championship. And I'm going to go with Kent State. Okay. Uh, let's jump over to our survival board here. This is a tool we do for the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee where we track how many teams are left alive with the chance to win it yeah. all, as well as whether they, those teams are locks or under consideration or the like. And heading into the day today, we had 188 teams left with a chance. Uh, yeah. As a result of today's action, uh, we have a buzzer. Let's try it again. <laughs> wow. 156, and actually, let's make that 154 because neither that late Big Sky nor the last uh, nor Oregon State's loss quite got in there right before the show started. So 154 is actually the number left right now. Uh, Griggs, tell people what 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 this whole all these different different categories in here mean, though. Okay. Well, yeah, the selection committee, as you mentioned, we do this for them. Uh, What the selection committee does throughout the weekend is they eat a lot of pasta and they eat a lot of ice cream and they may watch a game or two. But like, as far as how they go about selecting the teams, they rely on this board. Isn't that right, Chad? This this board. Yes, this board. So so if if they want to know, if they come to this, if they're wondering whether or not Xavier should be given an at-large bid. Yeah. Yeah. And that is in. What would this board tell them? Uh, that they should, because Xavier's in blue. The blue teams get the bids. If they're wondering whether or not Oklahoma should get 
an yeah. at-large bid. What would the it, board it, tell them? It, it, in one might wonder that where is Oklahoma? I got to see myself. Uh, in one Oklahoma. might wonder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> Yeah. In Norman. Yeah, it's in Norman. Well, you, you, you know, that's a good question. And they would come here and say, no, no, they shouldn't. Like, we don't even need to, to debate them because Oklahoma is totally eliminated. They've, they have a, they've been struck through. What if they're thinking, though, about Oklahoma State? The, in, yeah. And, and this is the one thing you can't do everything for them. I mean, y y you know, we want them to enjoy their pasta and their ice cream and, and you, you know, all the food and like what else. I think they play Twister in there and things like that. But um, uh, we do leave some of it up to them. The teams that are in green, the committee needs to decide for themselves. Uh, I guess that's all we have for the night, right? No, no, no. I'm getting, Good night. I'm, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Uh, I should have gotten okay. that last Dorman. night. I had the answer right. Okay. What's we, the I said final thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts, yeah. Uh, uh, as you all know, David Griggs is locked safely away in the puppet bunker behind many, many, many locks and some kind of weird combination number what? pad there and everything. Uh, but I shouldn't be in here. Uh, in order to get out, all I have to do is guess the two, guess a pair of blind resumes. So I've got a pair of blind ah! resumes here. And, Gr <laughs> and Griggs, as long as you can tell us who these two teams are, left and the right, you can get out. So go ahead. <laughs> well, check. Get rid of the replays. Enough you, of the you, replays. You. Okay, 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 go ahead. No more replays. Uh, okay, um, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, we'll get... Like, Chad, you really messed up this time. We looked at this earlier. You showed these two... <laughs> These two things earlier in the show. On the left, I see the win at Purdue. I see the win against Northwestern. On the right, oh, there, there's the loss to Eastern, or was it Central Michigan? I know who these are. I don't even need, they're in the same conference. They're actually playing each other tomorrow. I'm getting <laughs> out. The teams are Rutgers on the left and, and, and Michigan on I'm the I'm sorry, I heard the buzzer there, Griggs. Time is up. What? Uh, no, you no, did no, not no. get that decision in in no. time. What do you mean time is up? There's a time limit on these things. I shot heard the clock. buzzer. Anything the shot about... clock went off. You did not get it in. You you lose. Yeah. What? Well, I'll tell you what. I was answering the question. I'll tell you what. Let's go to the replay here. I, I, let me get no the monitor replays. out. I, let, no let me go replays. To the, let me go to the monitor here. I, got, I know I, the answer. I can't it's... stand the replays. <laughs> I'm going to Move steal on. a line from the puppet right here. If after 60 seconds you have still not made up your mind, no. it is by definition a dispute, and therefore you are th staying in the th bunker. This is different. Yeah. I'm, I'm locked in the bunker. This isn't just some kid. No, I answered the question. It's Rutgers and Michigan. They uh, uh, you, you, I know you know, I, I, I'm seeing you begin to say the R. I'm hearing the buzzer here on the replay screen. Uh, I don't think it got up. But I'm hearing also from two people that say we can't have replays. What? Uh, no, no, replay. no, no, no. We can replay this. We can replay this. I'm Did sorry, you? Griggs. <laughs> You're in the oh. bunker. <laughs> uh, let's go to final thoughts, Storman. <laughs> uh, ditch school tomorrow. Make sure you watch these games. Uh, Griggs stole my thunder. The next two days are the best two days of college basketball all year, the best two days of the year. Enjoy it. Uh, soon there won't be any uh, more games and we'll be so depressed. But tomorrow should be absolutely fantastic. We There's so many teams that need to win to stay alive. Losing or gone. Uh, teams making a run at titles. Uh, tomorrow is fantastic college basketball. Uh, Sleeka. Hopefully no rebounds. No starting, around noon time, we sh starting around noontime, we should get a reveal from our committee chairman, Chad Sherwood, as far as the Hoops HD selection committee, which teams are going to make it in on the uh, first ballot and which set of teams are going to be under consideration. So we'll probably go ahead and put an update on the board later in the evening before we start our day one deliberations where we begin to start adding teams to our uh, field right here. Uh, I, I can actually give a little update. I believe every vote has been cast. Uh, just to give you some numbers, wow. uh, there are going to be 29 teams that did get at-large bid, bids. Uh, in, by, I believe 29, and I believe they're right around the same number of teams, right, right around 29 teams that are going to be going on the under-consideration board approximately, uh, together with all of the conference regular season champions that were not otherwise voted in. And, and uh, the centenary winner. 
in the centenary and, winner. Uh, tomorrow night we will be we will be deciding our centenary winner tomorrow night, our Stillings Award winner. So tune in tomorrow night's show for that as well. Uh, tune in for an update on what our committee does. We'll probably be voting seven or eight more teams in beyond what what the first ballot gave us. So a lot of exciting stuff on what the mock committee is doing. But Greg, you want to finish off the show? Yeah, we alluded to this earlier. Uh, to uh, you know, the ACC yesterday saw Mike Bray's career come to an end. At least at Notre Dame, he might continue to coach somewhere else. And Jim Beheim, uh retiring after f- is it forty nine years as head coach? 47. Forty seven. Forty seven as head coach. Uh, who in the ACC uh, will retire tomorrow? Do you think? <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, uh, maybe Brad Brown. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, on that note, I do want to thank everybody for joining us. On behalf of David Dorman, John Salika, David Griggs, I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back again, like we said, tomorrow night with our first update from our mock committee, along with the rest of the video notebook. Talk to you then. <laughs>